Hello, beautiful students. Welcome back to another session for the Learn to Earn series with Sir Bench. <music> discussion we have discussed about a very beautiful article an informative article written by Lou Bob Stark entitled Overcoming Barriers in Marriage and Divorce wherein the writer herself uh, specifically pointed out marital problems that married couples are experiencing all over the globe and also um, she specifically proposed some of the solutions to be able to overcome these problems such as going to a therapist um, consulting to a spiritual lead or discussing it with with your partner so these boils down to the importance of communication in every relationship that we guys have now we have defined barrier as an interference or noise wherein these hinders the communication to become successful and effective and also, um, these barriers can be classified into three different types. We have the sender-oriented barriers, receiver-oriented barriers, and channel-oriented barriers. For sender-oriented, these are barriers that occurs within the sender himself or herself that will hinder him or her to communicate or to convey the message to the audience successfully. And these are some of the barriers that someone would encounter. We have lack of planning, lack of clarity, improper choice of words, difference in perception, and wrong choice of channel. And of course, um, all communicators in the process of communication would experience um, not just the sender. So the receiver would also experience different kinds of barriers that will hinder him or her to be able to accept and fully understand the message. And these are some of those barriers. We have poor listening, lack of interest, difference in perception, biased attitude, and closed-mindedness. And um, aside from receiver, the last one, we have the channel-oriented barriers because remember that a barriers will happen anytime, even in the transmission level of the message. And these are some of those barriers. We have noise, wrong selection of medium, technical defects such as um, slow internet connection whenever you are attending online classes. Now, these classifications can be divided into six different types of barriers. We have the physical barrier, semantic barrier, physiological, personal, emotional, and cultural barriers. So I'm pretty sure that you guys have experienced almost all of these barriers. However, you probably do not know what is the name or what is the uh, description of these particular, of these um, barriers in communication. So let us find out and um, let us find out what these barriers and and how are we going to overcome these barriers. Let's begin with physical barriers. This is also known as environmental barriers. These are environmental factors which limit the sending and receiving of messages. And in other words, these are surround. Uh, these are environmental noises that happens anytime. Okay, that will hinder you to communicate successfully. And the very first major type of barrier that I'm, I believe, almost all of us have experienced, we have noise, such as barking dogs. Um, in face-to-face -face classes, we have traffic outside the school campus that will obstruct the student-teacher discussion. So another example of physical or environmental barriers we have time and distance um, for example the time difference between two different countries may affect communication between two people right also this includes two people working in two different shifts let's say for example the other half is working on the night shift and the other person is working on the day shift and so um, they don't have time to be able to communicate with each other now another Another example of physical barrier, we have wrong choice of medium. Let's say, for example, I am delivering a public speech in front of the factory workers who are illiterate. And so 
in my speech, I'm using a PowerPoint presentation wherein it includes words. Um, do you think they'll be able to understand? I don't think so. Because again, illiterate, they don't know how to read and write. So that's a wrong choice of channel. Another one we have surroundings, uh, such as extreme weather condition or extreme um, room temperature, such as when the room temperature is too hot, about you would feel um, restless or tired and you don't want to continue listening. Whereas when the room temperature is too cold, you would feel lazy to continue communicating. Right now, what are the ways to be able to overcome these barriers? Number one solution that we can do is to choose a suitable environment where it's conducive for you to learn, uh, where you can continue communicating with other people. Let's say when the room temperature is too hot, then you can turn on electric fan or air conditioning units if you have one. And also, um, if the traffic outside obstructs the the class discussion, then we have to look or we have to transfer to a different classroom, okay? And of course, for time and distance, um, to be able to overcome the barriers, we have to be updated with the latest technologies for you to be able to, example, attend online classes, okay? Now, um, let us move to another barrier. We have the physiological barriers. So physiological barriers, this is also known as biological barriers. These are related to a person's health and fitness. These may arise due to disabilities that may affect the physical capability of the center or the receiver. These are some of many examples in physiological barriers. We have um, speaking can adversely affected by stammering or stuttering. Listening can be ineffective as a result of defective hearing. And writing can be failed due to hand injury or numbness. And lastly, reading can be affected due to poor eyesight. Now, to be able to overcome these barriers, we have to seek therapy and medical help for physical disabilities um, before you wear eyeglasses for poor eyesight. We have to make sure to consult with an eye doctor, okay, um, before you, you know, um, wear hearing aids, you have to also consult an expert with hearing, okay, so it's important to seek help with experts, and also for blindness, for deaf and mute, it's important to learn to understand body language, sign language, and braille, and uh, for poor eyesight and for those who are experiencing um, hearing difficulties, we have to allow them to sit closer to the speaker. So another type of barrier in communication, which I am very sure that you guys have experienced already, we have the semantic barriers. For semantic, this is also known as language or linguistic Barriers. The term semantic, this refers to the systematic study of meaning of the words. Um, semantic barriers, these are barriers related to language. They cause obstructions in the process of receiving or understanding of the message during the process of encoding or decoding ideas and works. Now, the most common semantic barriers are listed below. We have misinterpretation of words. Different people mean different meaning while using the same word. And another one, we have the use of technical language. So technical people use technical language. Um, a very a very good example here is a manager is um, a manager handed over a very important document to a new assistant and instructed the new assistant to um, burn to burn it to what the, what the manager means is to to make a copy to a computer but then the new assistant took a different meaning to the word burn it and she literally burned the document with the matchstick right so um, what I'm trying to say here technical language uh, these are jargons these are um, words or language used by specific 
profession such as doctor, lawyers, teachers, um, wherein n- people who are not included in the profession or in the organization will not be able to understand those words or the language. Okay. Another one, we have vocabulary deficiency. So vocabulary, vocabulary deficiency of both the center and the receiver may cause semantic barrier to communication. Let's say, for example, the other person or the speaker is using highfalutin words and the, the listener has limited vocabulary. So that will hinder the receiver to be able to successfully understand the message. Another one, we have connotative meaning. Remember that there are two kinds of meaning. We have the denotation or the denotative meaning and the connotative meaning. When we talk about denotative meaning, this is the dictionary meaning or the literal meaning. Well, connotative meaning, this is uh, meaning other than the dictionary. Okay. In other words, um, these are figurative meaning or not the literal meaning. Now, how can we overcome these semantic or linguistic barriers? What we can do is to, number one, speak slowly and clearly. So you guys speak different language. That is why it's important that we have to slowly speak. Make sure that you're going to enunciate and pronounce the words correctly as well. And ask for clarification. Um, you know, it's, it's okay if you're going to repeat the question. Uh, make sure that you're also going to rephrase it for the other person to be able to clearly understand you as well. So clarify and verify. And then uh, frequently check for understanding. Check um, to the other person if you are on the same page, if you are really understanding one another. And of course, you have to be patient with each other. Okay. Now let's move to another barrier, um, which is very familiar to everyone. We have the personal barriers in communication. So differences in personal and psychological makeup of individuals may create barrier between people. So personal barriers, this is also known as psychological barriers. They arise from judgments, emotions, and social values of people. Now, these are some of the most common personal barriers that um, we have experienced. Number one is attitudes and opinions. So assumptions and negative feelings about the receiver in a typical, let's say, for example, superior subordinate relationship, the, the employee may or may not ask questions, may even withhold information due to fear. Natatakot siya sa supervisor niya. Some supervisors also may not be open for suggestions ng ibang tao, specifically dun sa subordinates or dun sa mga employees niya, for example, because they presume that their subordinates are not capable of giving them advices. So this creates indifference between them, between the supervisor and the employee, and the employees do not feel motivated. And attitude becomes a barrier to communication when you are too confident with yourself. Now, um, another one, we have lack of self-confidence, right? Lack of self-esteem, either on the part of the center or the receiver while communicating may, be, may also be a barrier in communication. So how are we going to overcome these personal barriers? Number one is to start listening by or to other people um, and then stay calm and be positive. We have another type of barrier we call the emotional barriers in communication. Of course, these are barriers that are associated to emotions, okay, Um, such as blocked mind or close-mindedness. So, blocked mind considers only limited information and ignores or rejects additional information from other people, okay? Which is something that we should never possess, like what we have mentioned in our previous discussion. Also, we have bias and prejudice. If 
closed-minded people are asked for reasons for rejecting a message, they may reveal their prejudices. They react with anger and give a sharp rebuff who tries to argue with them. This acts as a barrier in communication. Diba, tinatanong lang naman sila kung bakit they won't accept the, the idea. But then, when they answered, pagalit. Diba? And there's a reason. Ah, kasi ganito yan siya. Ganito yung mga experience. Hindi siya mapagkakatiwalaan kasi um, ganito yung family nila. Diba? Um, she or he or she does not belong to a culture na ginagawa to. Diba? Or na ina-apply sa sarili. So, those are some of the prejudices. Now, also we have emotions ng mga tao. One state of mind plays an important role in act of communication. If the sender is worried when we are excited, afraid, nervous, then we will not be able to organize the message properly because we are not in the right state of mind. Okay? I mean, we are not in the right mindset. So, similarly, kung si receiver wala siya sa tamang pag-iisip, he or she may also interpret, misinterpret the message. Okay? Now, how are we going to overcome these emotional barriers? So number one is to, you need to have motivation and commitment to change. Okay? And of course, peer or mentor support. Ask help from your classmates, from, you know, from leaders, from teachers, um, to, to get advice to be able to overcome those emotional, um, those worries that you have. All right. Now let us move to the last type of barrier, uh, which is the cultural barriers in communication. So culture, this shapes the way we think and behave. Each group um, categorized on the basis of nationality, ethnicity, race, and religion. And we have our own distinctive culture. Okay, and cultural differences often cause communication differences. Um, it arises when individual will visit a certain place and do not know anything about the culture of the particular place or the people that he is visiting, right? Or that he or she is about to visit. Okay, for example, in Western culture, um, they wear black colors because that is associated um, with mourning. Diba? Pag, nag, pag may namatay, um, they wear black clothing. But in Far East countries like in Asia, in the Philippines, white color is the color of mourning. Okay? And in the U.S., in the United States, people love to be called by their first name while in Britain, they want to be addressed by their last name. Okay? Now, how are we going to overcome different kinds of cultural barriers? So, it's very important that we do cross-cultural understanding. Okay? So, what do you mean by cross-cultural understanding? So, this is when you research before you visit a particular country, before you begin, um, you know gumala dun sa kanila, it's important that you study about the community, you study about the people, how they show respect to each other, what are the do's and don'ts in um, when you visit a particular place. Okay? Also, it's important to be able to find out what are the um, non-verbal cues that, you know, really shows respect to people in that particular country or community. Now, have a thorough knowledge of your counterpart's cultural background, yes, and conduct effective communication workshop. Or just simply research. Um, everything is available on the internet, right? Um, you can read, watch videos, the do's and don'ts. And then work in groups. We have to cooperate with each other to be able to find out each other's differences and come up with um, ways to be able to communicate successfully with people who 
um, practice different culture. Okay, so those are some of, um, I mean, those are the barriers in communication that everyone would encounter and the ways to be able to overcome. Now, if these barriers cannot be resolved and it will continue to happen all throughout the communication process, then communication breakdown will happen. Okay, and communication breakdown, this is when all the communicators in the process are not understanding each other anymore because again of these different types of barriers okay now i hope that you have learned something today and i want you to take a short quiz i have um already posted it on your google classroom make sure to finish that within the day or else you will have deductions with your scores Thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something. Goodbye everyone and I'll see you in the next episode.